Well, well I mean, first, before we get to the news, I, everybody was talking about um, just all of the missteps that the I president got uh, so had many texts yesterday. yesterday in Puerto Rico. First of all, throwing paper towels at uh, the victims of the hurricane like it was a game. Um, or never seen anything like that before. Ever. And, and then saying, boy, you're lucky you didn't face a real catastrophe. You should be proud. Yeah, when Willie, uh, the, the stories coming out of Puerto Rico every day really keep getting worse, uh, you know, uh, drinking water, what, maybe over half the population doesn't have drinking water, people have been stranded uh, up on uh, hillsides for, uh, since the storm came through. It no is, electricity. No electricity, no electricity, it is, it is a grim, exceedingly grim uh, situation being faced by many residents of that island and Donald Trump goes in and goes, well, you're lucky. You're not facing a real catastrophe. If you watch that event from start to finish, it was it's, truly bizarre. The, the tone and the tenor of what was being said and the way it was being said was celebratory. It was like they'd, they'd finished a mission and they were there to celebrate it and toast to it. Meanwhile, as you point out, there's devastation right outside the door of where he was sitting. And you can see the, some of the discomfort on some of the Puerto Rican officials' faces, although they were glad he was there, and although they're glad that some of that aid is now getting into Puerto Rico. They're put in a horrible position. Just the, the, the it was go around the room and talk about what a great job we've done. And let's make sure these cameras see that it's much better than it's being reported in the media. Give them credit again for going. <laughs> Um, and going and handing out aid and meeting some of the people, but he left early, yeah. and it just felt like a very sort of pro forma visit, like something he had to do. Well, and and again, what he did uh, this is throughout was inappropriate. It was uh, it was bizarre behavior. Um, it was it was celebratory when this is an island that's struggling, and we see once again John Heilman uh, once again. Another example over the past week, what many people have always said about him, a basic lack of humanity. We saw it with him attacking and whipping up a crowd into a frenzy to boo John McCain last week. We saw it over the weekend when the people of Puerto Rico uh, were struggling and he was calling them basically ingrates. Yesterday he goes there and he says, boy, you're really busting our budget, really? Really? We, I mean, would we like to go down the list? I mean, how much his tax cuts are going to end up costing the country? And it will cost how the country. How about just accommodating his he, family's he, private jets? If you just, yeah, talk about his family's private jets. And his administration's private jets. Uh, it, it, it really, it's, it's staggering. The it's lack, so the basic lack of humanity and the growing concern that's always been there that this man is is disconnected from reality uh, at least in communications the way one human being speaks to another human being the way a president is supposed to speak to constituents and people in need he is he is incapable of even doing the most basic Thanks. Yeah, and I think it's a, and it's a, and it's a particular uh, aspect of humanity. It's this thing, and it's not the first time that anyone said it. Uh, we've talked about it, in fact, since he's come on the public stage. But this particular quality of empathy that he lacks. Um, uh, there's a, he, he does things that are cruel sometimes. In the case of John McCain, um, these are all various issues. But but in this case, you know, one of the most fundamental things you need to do as president of the United States in a circumstance like this, when people are suffering, people have been suffering, um, is not to do, play comparative games. Uh, this is worse than that. Not to talk about yourself. Not to boast about how well you're doing or how. You know, it's not none of this it should be about these constituents and about you know to use the famous Clinton phrase about feeling their pain. Uh, it's a really. It's actually not that hard. And I. I uh, well, it's not hard at all. Which is. It's not that hard. You could do it. There are some great political talents. Great presidents do it. Some of them do it exquisitely well. Some of them do it adequately. But it's not that hard to do it adequately because it's a basic function of being uh, a human being who sees someone in pain and is able to to understand that and feel for the person and, who's and, suffering. And to even know Harold Ford, what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. You you wonder uh, you, you wonder where this 71 year old man has lived his entire life. You 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 wonder like has he has he so insulated himself from human beings? Has he so insulated himself from suffering 
that he doesn't know how human beings react to what I mean of course listen we all know he's always had a harsh side he's always he's always had a bully uh, always had a bully inside of him but again even the tweet when he was trying to be uh, comforter in chief uh, on Las Vegas what did he say I send my warmest condolences nobody said nobody talks like that nobody Look, I, I can't. No, no, let me just, let me underline, <laughs> let me underline nobody at, w at, when there's a slaughter says, I send my warmest uh, condolences. Uh, and again, not nitpicking on that. Again, you see this growing body of, 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 of actions. And you just say, this man is disconnected from the basic norms of social behavior. The empathy, the, the inspiration, the emotion for him mostly comes from wanting to defend himself. I, you know, I think you and John said it best. He finds himself in a moment where people are expecting this from him, a hum, human side from him, a humane side from him. And all he really gives us is he wants to defend himself. He was most offended when he arrived in Puerto Rico, the fact that the mayor of San Juan had been critical of his administration's efforts. So as Willie said, he spent the bulk, if not all, of that press conference. With, uh, uh, it was a weird setup around a table with like 30 or 40 people uh, in that auditorium praising him and praising the people around him. So it, it's, it's, again, it's, it's consistent with whom he is, and I hope he, one can only pray he gets better. So believe it or not, there's lots more to show you on this. Uh Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.